Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever it is for you in your part of the world. So, I'm going to show you a demo extravaganza. We're going to uh, install and configure uh, storage spaces direct, including creating a brand new domain controller, all automated. A little bit of background about myself. So, my name is Jerry Odom. I'm a, currently a solutions architect for a technology company in Rapid, South Dakota. I formerly worked for that before for Microsoft MCS Enterprise Services where I did a lot of very very cool stuff including a fully automated image building factory for servers and clients. Uh, works really really well. Uh, 2016 PowerShell steps it up a notch decided to take advantage of the PowerShell Direct and utilize the technology to build a again fully automated uh, storage spaces direct demo which was originally inspired to build a lab that would be able to allow our technicians to become proficient in storage spaces direct by automating all that and then showing all the steps to do that for this demo everything is done for you as you can see I got my Hyper-V right here I got nothing going on uh, one little cloud box running there uh, the host has got dual uh, MVE uh, drives and a stripe set, so it's quite fast. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop over here and we're going to get the process started. Uh, yep, I think so. so. Yes, sounds like a good answer. Now, it's actually designed to delete any previous instances that you have before, um, but to make sure for this video that it was clean and everything, I actually only show that. So we're going to go ahead and pause it right now and come back when something interesting is happening. So here we're installing the Active Directory components, about to run the Active Directory wizard. So all this technology was actually used and developed a system that I created to streamline the build process of a two node storage spaces direct to a number of small business clients it was it has turned out a net yield of probably 70 percent less time on site for actually the deployment model basically the operating system gets installed all the prereqs for storage spaces get installed you bring it on site you run two additional scripts and boom you have storage spaces direct pretty much the same technology that we're using here obviously this is in a virtual environment and then we we're able to streamline that and reduce the on-site time significantly. All right, so I'm going to put them in my restore password. I like to use all stars because uh, it's just easier that way. Pause that and let it do its thing. As you can see, it's building me a new domain controller called cloud.lab. And everything you're seeing is happening without me logging into the OS, except for the final piece to show you everything in the vid. So now it's finishing. It's going to create me a share for my file witness coming up. So my domain, domain controller is all built, fully automated, didn't touch anything. My witness share is all created. Now I'm going to run a second command or script. Okay, so DC is up. I'm going to run a second script here, which is going to finalize my DHCP, create me a couple OUs. I can put my uh, server objects and cluster objects. Okay. Now the, that part is done. We're going to run a third script. And we'll do a full lab implementation utilizing the parameters that have already been put in by the domain controller. Yes. Again, it's going to try to remove the... All right, it's 
going to let me know what virtual switches are there. It's going to ask me if I want to remove the old one. I'm going to go ahead and say yes and let the script create a new one. It's pinging the domain controller to make sure it's online. And it's going to ask me if I'm ready to deploy. And I say yes. So we'll come back after it does its magic. 36 seconds for a 18.75 uh, DHDA. Not too shabby. We'll start the VM, start the whole sysprep process, and start building all the parameters of the VM. Let's do a look through the two nodes. 54, 56, 56. It doesn't matter. Just a parameter. Almost done here. We are actually enabling the uh, cluster. Be right back. Okay, it's finished. All sitting it here at a PowerShell prompt. Let's exit out of here. Let's minimize this and let's uh, let's load up an RDP session. Put in the local IP address. Uh, username. password. I'm going to use the all stars again. It's my favorite. <laughs> Alright, so logging in. It's the first time. Alright, let's do a little shortcut here with some PowerShell action. Yeah, I know there's many different ways to get to that, but uh, I don't know. It just seems because I'm going to do this all the time. All right, so in the let's go load up cluster manager. Got a shortcut on my desktop. So you'll see my nodes here, storage. Okay, so let's look at our storage, our disks. So I've got a disk, healthy, volume. Let's see uh, our networks. All renamed automatically. Live migration is set. Notice the name of the volume. Resource group 1, volume 1. Also notice it's changed here. RG1. It's even got a folder to put VMs in. So everything, there's nothing that you need to do on this cluster. File witness is set. The disk is set up. Everything's done. Ready to go. And as you can see, didn't do much whatsoever. So let's run a quick little uh, IO disk test using disk speed. Try that again. It doesn't like the raw PowerShell. So a big quick test here. Pretty good numbers. Pretty good throughput. Well, that's it. Under 9 minutes and 44 seconds. Obviously, a lot more goes into that, but basically three scripts, full configuration, 